people, they are preventing anything from happening good. The first condition for a military deta uh, coup d'etat has already been met. The incompetent and corruption of a ruling civilian elite. The U.S. military now realizes its own people are dying because of insolence and incompetence of an administration under the direction of Obama, and I'm going to add the Bush. The Bush era. The only issue is whether or how much longer they will tolerate it. Not whether it actually exists, but how much we're going to put up with it. On a broad range of issues, the Obama administration is seriously disconnected from any of the general populace, and they have no clue who Obama is. The U.S. military is appalled at the level of stupidity regarding nuclear weapon stand-downs, forced deployments, and wars both in Afghanistan and Iraq. They're appalled at open attacks on Islam inside the U.S. being allowed by the Obama administration. The U.S. military is coming to two conclusions about the Obama administration, and here they are. They are incompetent, number one. Number two, that incompetent is getting Americans killed. If it, I, it got American soldiers gunned down at foot, Fort Hood. It got 300 Americans killed in the Detroit airport. The military will not give Obama a third chance. Three strikes, you're out. I could add that Janet Janet's incredibly moronic statement about the system working didn't go over in the intelligence, some of the intelligence and the military. You can be a bastard, but you better be a competent bastard. We have a situation where the civilian leadership is discredited, where we have incompetence, and it's allowing Americans to be killed with impunity. And folks, there are peoples whose lives have been ruined through corruption from many of the agencies. Corruption of the IRS who haven't got, I feel your pain at the heart of their organization. Through the corruption of being a person that loves freedom because your agenda doesn't fit the empirical one world orders agenda. The USA lurches and stumbles and here's what's going to be the scenario that likely is to come. Through 2010 with increasing economic and social distress the system will manage to ensure enough debt to maintain social order long enough for the November elections and that then after that you can see that probably unless something is not working inside the plans of the ruling elite the devaluation of the dollar will come after elections if it's not working out and they want to change at the administrative level of the highest offices in this land the US dollar will de be devalued before the November elections. The Republicans stomp the Democrats <laughs> and America loses again. Early in 2011 the Republicans attempt to reverse our Marxist in chief agenda or the Republicans betray the voters and they make few changes. The only certain result is a bitterly divided country with 25% of the Obama true believers versus 25% armed militia with the rest of us caught in the middle. The military will also be caught in the middle 
as the rhetoric intensifies with changes of racism and anti-Semiticism being thrown in. In 2011, the Taliban kicked and the U.S. out of Afghanistan. In the U.S. itself, militant Islam openly attacks with impunity due to the political correct dogmas of Obama and his ilk. We will lurch through 2011 as a state of profound crisis at all levels. The Southern Poverty Law Center will issue hysterical press releases that there are Nazis everywhere. Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton will start howling about racism. And everybody is screaming at each other about everything. As the U.S. heads into 2012, the nation is fundamentally flawed at all levels. Social anarchy will be everywhere with riots in the urbans. The urbanites protest service cuts. The government, when it functions at all, will be at a bare minimum. The U.S. military will watch helplessly as it's defeated overseas. They're going to be forced to flee with its tail between its legs back to the U.S. where Obama bots openly attack it for racism, incompetence, and blame them for defeats. And the Republicans, I'm going to say, are going to say, you bunch of cowards, get back over there. The military watches helplessly as domestic social order phrase under the economic and racial tensions of the 2012. As the election cycle builds up, the military, the military simply acts. It will act since the social order is breaking down. It will act since the system cannot deal with the crisis. It will act because the military is the power of last result and when all else fails, the military will step in. The U.S. military simply tells Obama he is through. And by the way, my uh, friend that's passed away, that was in counter-espionage and intelligence in the military, told me the military forced President Nixon's to step down. So I wouldn't be a bit surprised here. The U.S. military takes over and removes all of Obama bots from the government. That's you, Rahm Emanuel. That's you, Hillary Clinton. And the list goes on. By the way, it's also you guys that got appointed by the Bush administration to the World Banks, the Federal Reserves, the State Department is going to be cleaned out, folks. The military declares the borders sealed and sends the 82nd Airborne. Showing on the television the Airborne drop to the Texas border. The military declares martial law and for six years and simply starts doing things. The military issues execution orders for all terrorists in captivity along with child molesters and anybody on death row. The military sends 1,000 troops to Wall Street and begins arresting heads of Goldman Sachs and AIG and others. They are paraded live as they arrest them. The videos are allowed to stream televisions to the crowds and jeering onlookers. The military deals with the usual riots by blacks and others in the cities by simply sealing them off, giving them food and power. After three weeks, all organized opposition to the military coup will collapse, since the armed militia will make no attempt to fight the military. The military arranged a summit of all the constitutionalists and the populists and the militia and the patriot groups and find strong support for this military coup d'etat as Muslims are rounded up for deportation if they are political dissidents and political liberals flee the country for France. Large numbers of Americans that have no concern over the military coup stay. In fact, many even welcome it. 